Good morning. Welcome to Anacostia High School. My name is Dr. Anna Kaskin. I'm the medical director for the MedStar School-Based Health Center here at Anacostia High School and Roosevelt High School. I want to thank my partners in the work that we do in school-based health, um, DC Health, DCPS, here with Dr. Bennett, Dr. Bandiali from DC Health, and also Dr. Faraby from DCPS. And we just want to take a little bit of time this morning to let families know about the work that we're doing here in the schools to get kids ready for school from a health perspective, particularly focusing on vaccines and uh, sports participation physicals, which are available in the seven school-based health centers around the city. Uh, we have traditionally focused on the students who are enrolled in the school where the school-based health center is located, but we've been able in the last several summers, particularly since the COVID pandemic kind of um, turned up, upturned a lot of people's health care and a lot of kids kind of fell off track with their vaccine compliance. So we've been able to expand our services during the summers to kids across the city, regardless of what public school they're enrolled in, so that they can come into the school-based health center and get vaccines and get sports participation physicals. Our services are free of charge to the families, so if they have private insurance, Medicaid, or they're uninsured, they're not charged for any of the services that we provide. I want to focus especially on vaccines as it relates to um, particular age groups. So we want all kids to be up to date and compliant with their vaccine requirements, but for families it can be confusing. There are a lot of visits, a lot of vaccines, a lot of new vaccines crop up over the course of the kid's life that they need to get into compliance with. So one easy way for families to think about it is to think about the big vaccine visits which are for kids who are age four or five years old, age 11, and age 16. For each of those visits, there are sort of a new round of vaccines that they need to get. So if your kid is in that age range and you're not sure if they've had their latest well child check or their latest round of vaccines, it's worth calling your primary care provider, calling your school enrollment office, your school nurse, your school-based health center, because that's the easy part. We can look that up real quick for you and let you know what vaccines your child might be due for. We also want kids to get their sports participation exams. So the older kids uh, can come in and get a physical exam and get ready for sports as well. Um, I think I will leave it here and I will pass it on to my colleagues and I'll just introduce Dr. Ayanna Bennett, who's the acting director of DC Health. I know we'll have time at the end for question and answer. so. Um, We'll be here to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Dr. Ayanna Bennett. I'm the acting director at DC Health. If you um, don't know me, you have good reason. I am new to the department. And I am most recently coming from San Francisco Department of Public Health, where I was the chief health equity officer and the director of the Office of Health Equity. I am really excited to bring that experience and build on the vision of my predecessors and the great work of the staff at DC Health, this included, and make DC the healthiest city in the nation. We are um, almost getting, we're ready for our children to come back to school. I say us, but myself, I'm almost ready. Um, and, but as we bring our families back to school, there is a little bit of homework I'm gonna give you. I'm going to give it to all of the parents and children who are coming back to school, including myself. And that is to get your vaccinations up to date. And that is a very important step that needs to happen ideally before you arrive at school. And we want all of the children in DC to be compliant with that. And for good reason. We want them to come back healthy and safe. And part of that safety comes from those vaccinations. So those vaccinations are what help keep them safe in school. We're fortunate that we have all of the vaccines that we do. We're in a time where we have the technology and the know-how to keep kids safe from a whole host of diseases that were a problem for the generations before us and are not for us. But that is only if you get the vaccines. So the potential life-saving vaccines that we want your children to get um, are best given by their primary care doctor 
we do want you to go see the doctor that knows your child and you already are connected to, but that's not always possible for everyone. So we wanna be sure that you have the information to get vaccinations for your child, whatever your circumstance is. So we've set up some ways for you to do that. So we've made sure that you know that they are required and they're required for good reason. And now we wanna be sure that you can meet that requirement. So the first at the school-based clinics, as you've just heard of, um, you can take your child if they're four or over to any school-based clinic, regardless of which DC school they're enrolled in. You can also um, work with community providers that DC Health has partnered with to make sure that there are mobile units that are going to be placed at different community centers um, and school rec centers so that they're available to you. The last is that your well child appointment may not be an easy appointment for you to make for whatever reason, but you can make a vaccine appointment. MedStar, Children's National, Safeway, and others are going to make available easy access vaccine appointments that you can make for your child to get compliant. So details are available on all of these different methods of filling the requirement on our social media, on our website at DC Health, and they've been shared with the schools and providers across the city so that you have multiple places to get the information you need. Please remember that um, all of this is going to be seen on your universal health certificate for your child, and we need one of those for each child who's enrolled. So one of the barriers that we noted in the past was that that um, certificate had to be brought in a print copy by the parent to the school. That's clearly a barrier for many of our families, and so we wanted to address that. So now you will have an option for the provider in a provider tool that we are, are launching now to be able to take the universal health certificate and deliver it directly to the school and to DC Health through our DC Health provider portal. So Dr. Asad Bantayali is going to um, talk more about that. He is our Health Access Bureau Chief and we'll have more of those details in a moment. But as we continue to support all of our students as they come back to school safely, we want to um, be sure that you are aware of what's needed so you may hear from us by phone or by mail if your student is missing one or more of their vaccinations so that you know that you need to do something about that. Routine vaccinations are, of course, a requirement for school, but that is not their only importance. They're really to keep your child safe wherever they go. So they are meant for their life. And I want you to really think of them as something that you're doing for the health of your child, not just so that they can go to school. So um, DC Health wants to make sure you have the information you need. So we're going to have a virtual town hall on Tuesday, August 8th from 5 to 6 p.m. And you'll be able to get updates on school health and all of the things that you um, need around the school health centers, not just vaccines. And you can reach um, that website to register at schoolhealthtownhall.eventbrite.com. Please do register online. So let's all do our part, and your part is to get your child vaccinated if you are a parent or child in the DC school system. And we wanna be sure that every child sees their primary care provider, but if you can't, we've given you multiple options. You can learn about them more if you need to at pedsvax, P-E-D-S-V-A-X dot DC dot gov. So I wanna thank all of our partners. We've had really strong partnerships with MedStar and other community partners, and those are critical for strengthening the district's healthcare ecosystem so that everyone has the access they need to do the things they need to keep themselves and their family members healthy. So thank you for all of those partners in stepping forward for this effort, and thank you to all the district families who are taking advantage of these resources to do what's needed for our children. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Asad Bandayali, who is our Healthcare Access Bureau Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. My name is Asad Bandayali. Uh, as Dr. Bennett mentioned, I'm the uh, Bureau Chief for our Healthcare Access Bureau, and I'm a pediatrician. And uh, I'm happy to say that immunization coverage is rising in the district. If we look at measles, mumps, rubella vaccine amongst our kindergartners, it's actually up from a low of 79% in spring of 2021 to 89% this spring. That's significant improvement, and that's due 
to the hard work and care of parents and families taking your kids in to get immunized and to have their well child care, the work of school nurses and school uh, leaders to reach out to families, to remind them about their vaccines um, and the importance of having them for school, and then also healthcare practitioners um, like Dr. Kaskin and others who uh, have made it so much easier to get to vaccines, have facilitated access, and uh, are working hard every day to make sure that you have the care that you need. Um, we still have a ways to go. Our target is 95%. We've made improvements, but we have much more work to go. We need to band together and stick with it for another year and for every year coming forward. This year, DC Health has updated the definition of compliance to make it easier for families and simpler for schools and healthcare practitioners to know when a child needs any given shot. Essentially, as soon as a shot comes due, Based on the CDC schedule, your child is due for it and it's required for schools. And so this matches recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as the way that most other states handle this. The best place to get one's immunizations, as Dr. Bennett said, is at your primary care provider as part of your ongoing well child care. Um, your primary care provider can answer questions about your child's physical health, social and emotional development, as well as immunizations or any other topic. That being said, we know that the, the primary care provider can also fill out the universal health certificate. We know for families that providing a, uh, a paper copy of this can be difficult. And so this year, we're launching the Electronic Universal Health Certificate, or EUHC. So any student who attends a DCPS or a DC Public Charter School that's part of the School Health Services Program can actually is eligible to submit an electronic UHC through their healthcare provider. Providers can log on to the DC Health Provider Portal to do so. And that data will be then available in your student's child health record and is transmitted and stored in compliance with all federal and local requirements around safety and privacy. We know it's not always easy to get a well child appointment where you need it, when you need it. And so as Dr. Be Bennett mentioned, we've partnered up with folks like MedStar, Children's National and Safeway and others to provide easy access. A couple examples of upcoming events. So as you've heard, the school-based health centers are open access throughout the rest of the summer um, and a great place to get immunized and attend to well child care. Uh, next Tuesday, August 8th, MedStar's Mobile Medical Clinic will be at Potomac Gardens in Southeast. Uh, Children's National's Mobile Medical Unit will be at Richard Wright Public Charter School. And then next Saturday, a uh, partner of ours, C3, will be at the Black Mamas Wellness Community Event uh, at Bard High School in Southeast, right near the Congress Heights Metro. Uh, a couple reminders for families. Religious exemptions and HPV opt-outs expire July 1st each year. So if this applies to your family, please be sure to renew. Your medical home will book up. These special access vaccine events will book up. So now is the time to act to make sure that your child is updated on their immunizations and uh, ready, for, ready for school. And uh, as Dr. Bennett mentioned, if we all do our homework, uh, put vaccines on our back to school list, our kids can be immunized, safe, healthy, and ready to learn. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll pass it to Chancellor Sheriff Farabee. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bondiali. Uh, appreciate the partnership. Thank you for bringing us together on this important topic as we think about the wellness of our, our young people and the opening uh, of school. We've seen uh, the great thing that we can accomplish when we work together. I think the data points you described earlier is, is certainly something that we're proud of, but as shared, we are continuing to ensure that we move forward. I also want to take a moment to uh, recognize Principal Walker here at Anacostia High School. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to, to be here at Anacostia High School. Uh, they have a phenomenal team, and I can't think of a better place to have this conversation about wellness and health as our students are learning in very innovative ways and are extremely creative. And in this building, we actually have students who are facilitating uh, plants that are being grown here in a greenhouse here at the school. And as we think about growing your own healthy foods, uh, it's a great place to not only learn, but also think about this important conversation that we're having today around health. Uh, so again, shout out to the students here and staff here at Anacostia High School. Uh, to Dr. Bennett and also to Deputy Superintendent Branson, 
Uh, we greatly appreciate the partnership between DC Health and OSSI. I think we've shown uh, great resiliency, but we also have shown over the last couple of years uh, that when we collaborate and we partner well, we're able to produce uh, strong results. And I know we spent lots of time together over the last few years. Uh, also, as you think about where we are today in just a few weeks to open the schools, Dr. Bennett, I'm quite sure you and all the parents are thinking about how soon school will open. And I know parents are eager to get students back in school. And so as we prepare for the opening of schools and families are preparing at home, we know that you have your checklist. And so we're reminding you to ensure that your child's wellness visit, uh, the vaccinations that have been described today are part of that checklist to ensure that DCPS and all our public schools can start the school year strong. Uh, as we think about, you know, camps and schedules and where families are, again, we want to ensure that you build into your planning this idea of coming back to school, learning, uh, and being healthy and strong. As we also think about the foundation of our communities, we also understand that as shared earlier, when students are properly vaccinated and they have their wellness visit, it's not only an important step for the family, but our communities as a whole, and also thinking about addressing some of the issues we've seen around health equity. And so we support our families and we hope that they will join us in this holistic approach of ensuring that our communities are healthy. As we also send our students back to schools, I do wanna reiterate the importance of having options with the electronic version of the universal health certificate and also uh, the paper document that can be submitted. And this is something that we require uh, each year. And we ensure that families, when they submit this information, have the appropriate documentation as shared earlier for athletics and extracurriculars, which is an important part of our student experience. I also want to thank Dr. Kaskin and the MedStar team. Thank you for your partnership. Our health suites continue to be a great place to provide a wealth of services for families. I was blown away uh, last year, had an opportunity to be in the health suite and see one of our telehealth visits. Uh, so you think about you know the old days where if there's a possible ear infection, you had to go see the physician, you had to get your prescription, parents had to schedule something during the day or in the evening. And what I saw is a student getting a check right there in the health suite. The prescription was then provided. Parent didn't have to leave their home or their workplace. And we were able to get the student back in school as quickly as possible. And so those are the types of partnerships that we're really proud of and that we're able to provide in our health suite. So again, we encourage all of our families to think about immunizations and the universal health certificate as they're planning for opening school and reminded that the first day of school is August 28th. Uh, so we're grateful to have, again, these citywide partnerships, and it's my pleasure at this time to turn it over to Deputy Superintendent Branson. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chancellor. Good morning, everyone. My name is Danielle Branson. I'm the Deputy Superintendent of Academics and Schools at the Office of the State Superintendent of Education. I'm also a parent of a rising pre-K-3 student and rising kindergartner at a DC public school, elementary school. So thank you, Chancellor, for the work your team has done to get us all ready for a strong start of school. We want to ensure that all of our students have everything they need for a healthy start of the school year. And this means making sure that all children see their primary medical provider for a well child visit and receive all needed immunizations. You've heard that consistent message across all of us today. We're working together collectively as a district to make sure that all of our children receive the immunizations they need to stay safe and healthy. Because our children belong in school with their friends and their teachers who care about them. We also know that if an outbreak of one of these serious or potentially deadly diseases were to occur, it could have a harmful impact on our children, our families, and our staff. Vaccinations save lives. And we strongly encourage our parents and families to prioritize these shots and schedule these well child visits as soon as possible. As part of our continued commitment to supporting the overall wellness of our students, we expect all of our students, all of our children, to be fully up to date on their routine pediatric vaccinations when they return to school this fall. Ensuring children have their routine immunizations help them, their classmates, and their school communities stay safe and healthy. We are really lucky to have such a strong primary care community with pediatricians ready to vaccinate their patients and the community supports from DC Health provide them even more resources to get our children vaccinated. It's this layered approach that's gonna ensure that we are so successful. 
at the Office of the State Superintendent of Education, we're helping our schools ensure vaccination compliance through trainings we provide to school teams that help them coordinate their efforts on the ground, as well as commu communications tools like sample letters, communications toolkits, and flyers to engage families early and often from now, from early spring through the start of school and beyond. Vaccinations are the best way to keep our students and our community members safe and healthy. And together we can ensure that all students in the District of Columbia have what they need for a healthy start of the school year. So I wanna thank you for coming together for this really important moment. And with that, I will turn things over back to Dr. Bandiali for um, some questions. So thank you. All right. Hello. Yeah, are, are there any questions? We'll just open it up. It could be for any of us. Yes, actually, Kate Ryan with WTOP. I had a question about um, if a child shows up on the first day of school again, and this might be for Dr. Farabee as well, what is the policy going to be? And in the past, what have the roadblocks to getting higher compliance numbers been? You've talked about developments in making it easier, simpler, more one-stop for parents and families. What kind of roadblocks remain? Yeah. I'll turn this over for now. Thank yeah. you. So, so your, your first question is about what, what do we do if a student shows up without the appropriate documentation as relates to the vaccination. So we give family a grace period to provide that documentation. So we welcome all students and families on the first day of school. Uh, once they receive notification, typically comes from the school administration or the school nurse assigned to that school they'll be given a specific date in which they are required to provide that documentation. We work with families over a period of time and we don't hear from them. We also provide resources and how they can schedule those appointments. Uh, we also share more information about the various options that were shared earlier, uh, such as Safeway and other places where students can receive uh, the appropriate services. Uh, in terms of barriers, we, we continue to think through and, and get feedback from our families of, of what's creating challenges for them. Uh, and so having multiple locations uh, and multiple options. And then as we shared earlier, having the feature of an electronic version of the universal health certificate is something that we have been responsive to in terms of the feedback that we receive. And we look forward to gathering more feedback. We know families have lots of documents that they have to complete at the beginning of the school year. Uh, but we think the benefit is, is tremendous when we do get that documentation back. For example, I mentioned earlier the telehealth visit. Part of our documents that we provide to families at the beginning of the school year is giving authorization for that. And so when we have that, we're able to address some of the health needs of students in a, a faster pace and allow students to be in school or to return to school as quickly as possible. Like a silly question, are some of those things available on uh, using a phone? And I ask because I've taught in school districts where the digital divide was pretty broad and people might not have a computer at home, they might not know that they can access them at a library, but they had a cell phone. Can this be done via phone as well, the electronic forms and, and that sort of thing? I'll let the, the health team speak to the universal health certificate, but we do provide options for families to submit uh, or at least complete forms on their phone. Uh, and we also open up our schools and give access to technology when families don't have technology in the home. Hi. I'll answer you just around the EUHC specifically, the Universal Health Certificate. The barrier of having the parent have anything to do beyond scheduling the appointment and showing up to it is what we're trying to eliminate. So it is a provider portal. So it is for the person providing the vaccination to tell the school and DC Health, not for the parent to do, they authorize that. But what we're trying to do is eliminate a step for them rather than make the step easy to do on their phone. So they shouldn't have to do that at all, hopefully. Any further? Thank you. Um, just wondering if you could talk a little more about the vaccine uh, compliance numbers at this point. You mentioned that some numbers have rebounded or improved, and I'm curious if they've rebounded to pre-COVID levels. Mm, yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. 
Um, so we talked about the MMR coverage, so that's kind of the percentage of students who are protected against that, those illnesses. Um, and so that's been rising, and that's usually a really good marker that we use um, kind of broadly to determine are we ensuring that our kids get immunized. Um, compliance itself. Uh, so. Because we've updated the compliance definition, we know that the overall percentage is gonna look lower than it did at the end of last year. Um, and so if we did an apples to apples comparison from uh, last summer to this summer, based on the old definition, we're up from 72% compliance to 80%. Under the new definition, district-wide it's 68%, but, uh, but we know that that's going to, uh, that's gonna rise as, you know, children come in to see their healthcare providers as, uh, as schools kind of come back to session and uh, the school nurses and school health teams um, and school leaders kind of uh, work with families to ensure that they're covered. Uh, the, is COVID the determining factor there or what changed? In terms of what, sorry? Uh, in terms of numbers. Uh, right, yeah, so I think down. the biggest thing is um, clear, like, clearing up the compliance definition and making it kind of simpler. So it means that as soon as you need the shot, you're due for the shot. Um, so it does, it is a, you know, it, it does make it simpler for families, but it does mean that there are more students considered non-compliant at this time, but that's definitely going to change as, uh, as families start kind of, uh, they're already pressing the uh, healthcare providers for their well child visits. They're already uh, turning in their universal health certificates. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we know that the pandemic itself um, was a significant barrier to, you know, getting healthcare access. That's starting to alleviate as well, and so we're happy to see these rates starting to rise. Okay, just a final follow-up. Um, that's for routine immunizations overall. Uh, the COVID vaccine, I understand, is not required for school start. Is that correct? Right, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes, please, please. I just wanted to add a couple um, points to both those last two questions, and I would point out in terms of compliance rates, I just want to have a quick humble brag. Anacostia High School typically has the highest compliance rate of all the public schools in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and I really I attribute that to the hard work of our clinic staff and a really, really strong partnership with the school nurses both at Anacostia High School and the feeder schools to Anacostia High School and the support from our partners at DCPS and DC Health. So that was just one point I wanted to make. I think the other point around barriers is the vaccine schedule is very complicated and hard to understand, even on the provider side sometimes. Um, I think some things that families would benefit from understanding that if your child has never been enrolled in DCPS or if they're new to DC, especially if they're new to the country, we don't have access to their records. So they may show up as not having any vaccines. So any records that they do have, they should bring with them um, to their doctor's visits. And that's the fastest way to get them um, caught up on paper. Um, if they don't have any records at all, we have to start from basically the, ch the early childhood vaccines. For, so for a student in high school, that may, may mean that they need six shots every two months to get caught up. So I think a lot of families understand that their child just had several vaccines in the not too distant past, and so why are we telling them that they're out of compliance now? So it's understanding that most of the vaccines involve a series, that they have to get two doses of the MMR vaccine. They have to get three doses of the hepatitis B vaccine. So it takes time. Once they get behind, it takes time to get them caught up. Um, so I think that, that sometimes that's a barrier because it's just frustration on the part of the families or not understanding that um, their impression was that their child was caught up and now we're telling them their child is not caught up. And it's as easy as a birthday. So last year when your child was 10, they were caught up and now they're 11 and they're due for several vaccine doses. So. Um, just clarifying for families that it's, it's complicated and we understand the frustration around thinking your child's up to date and we're telling you that they're not. So. COVID, at the height of COVID, we saw the problems that uh, skepticism caused. And a lot of gov local governments and state governments had to work very hard to overcome that. 
Are we in a better position now? I know, for example, in Montgomery County, they found the outreach they did to the Latino community with the character Abuelina, like a, a trusted figure explaining the process to you. Are you seeing less skepticism now, or do you find that you still have things to overcome there, and what's working? Personally, sort of on the front lines in the, in the clinic, um, I think we're possibly seeing a little bit less skepticism, particularly when it's not a requirement, right? I think families or individuals um, feel a little bit of pressure when they're told that it's a requirement as opposed to a choice. Um, so we're finding a lot of families are opting into uh, the COVID vaccine in particular. Um, there is also, there can be some confusion around just the term vaccine. Some people take the term vaccine to mean the COVID vaccine, and we're trying to explain, no, we're, we're talking about all childhood vaccines and immunizations. So sometimes there's just um, the language around it can be confusing as well. Is there a one-stop place where you would tell parents to go? Because, Doctor, you mentioned it can be confusing, like, uh, wait a minute, which ones are they up for now? Is there a one-stop shop where they can go, I need to know all the vaccines and the immunizations um, that I need in order to enroll my student? Yeah, so definitely if you go to pedsvax.dc.gov, that's our website, um, and that's where you'll find information on uh, all of the vaccines that your child may need, so the full childhood schedule. You'll find information on the vaccines that are required for school. You'll also find information on where you can go to get your vaccinations, and that's, I think if we're talking about one-stop shops outside of just the information, it's going to be your medical home with your pediatrician. Um, they know you best. They know your child. They're able to answer your questions and uh, can really kind of dig into some of the, the questions, as Dr. Kaskin was saying, around what's the schedule and why is it more multiple vaccines or why is there a series versus one vaccine for certain things, et cetera. So I think your medical home is a great place to go for that. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, John Lewis Elementary School. Oh, it's a beautiful campus.